I did just rewatch The Godfather, and I love the violence in that movie. Yeah. How it just really seems as though these people are being hurt, and these people are dying, or these people are not dying. Violence in Bonnie and Clyde, same thing. Yeah, and uh, you watch Don Corleone get shot at the beginning of the movie. It's at the beginning, don't worry, he lives. How he just slides off the hood of the car and gets caught on the chrome in the front of it. That's probably what I would do if I was shot. Doesn't Sonny get shot before he gets no, shot? No, Sonny gets shot right after Don Corleone comes home from the hospital. Okay. And Sonny okay. has had the whole war thing that he was running, and that's why Sonny gets killed. Now and you know two people that die. Corleone doesn't die. But he does, actually. So there's another spoiler for you. Tis the season for unboxing. Is there any more appropriate time of the year to unbox? My birthday. Oh. And we're going to thank our donors. People have gone to welcometothebasementshow.com and contributed. Nathan, Scott, Jennifer, Samuel, T.A., Betty, Melanie, Melanie, Abigail, Brian, Michael, Alexander, Kelsey, and Michael, and Morwenna, who says, just a tiny thank you for always being there for us. Well, once a week, anyway. Emily, Mora, Roger, Luke, Dan, Alfred, Shelby, Patrick, Say, Reed, Anthony, James, Lindsay, Martha, Abraham, David, Luke, Andrea, Thomas, Elizabeth, and Eric. Yeah! Posty cards! All right. This is from Shirley and Thrall, who is her cat. Her name is Parmesome on YouTube, and this is from St. Louis. St. Louis. Good old St. Louis. I was just down there in August to see myself one of those eclipses. Chris, greetings from Maine. Thanks for all the entertainment, history, and insight. Thank you. And Matt from Cedar Rapids, Iowa says, best stockings gifts? I do know the best stocking gift. I used to get these when I was a kid. They were always a stocking stuffer. And I don't even know if they still make them. It was the storybook that had the rolls of lifesavers in it. Do oh. you remember that? Mm, no. You I never don't. got one of those? No, my parents hated me. I will always associate it with the, with the holidays. It opened up and it had rows of lifesavers in All mm. of the flavors. Spear-o-mint. Pep-o-mint. <laughs> The fruity kind, which you ate in a day, pretty much, and then the other ones hung around for the rest of the year. I really hope they still make those, because that is a great stocking stuffer. When I think of stockings, I think of pens. Getting one good pen a year. It works! <laughs> and Tona would get apples. Was it apples? Apples, oranges, bananas, vanilla wafers, and Cheez-Its. I've got two cards here from Mark in Fulton, New York. One is addressed to me, and one is addressed to you. What a coincidence. Might I have one of our many... Yes. There you go. Hand, hand of the king. king. He knows that we filmed this well before Christmas, and he got us Christmas cards. Mine says, Happy Holidays. Oh, this is for Matt and Tona. Wishing you all a rewarding and prosperous 2018. How thoughtful. Yes, and he says much the same over here. 2018. It's going to rock. This time I mean it. Anybody want the peanut? <laughs> I'm under the giant. <laughs> How are you doing? <laughs> How are you doing? <laughs> It's me, Andre the Giant, my boomerang fish. Uh, looks like Mark has also sent us a package. Uh, it says, my girlfriend Jenny and I went to New York City recently and picked up a few things. Hi, Jenny. Looks like they're postcards. And they're in 3D. These are supposed to be tough to catch. Let's see if I can do it. Nope. See? Nope. <laughs> oh, 3D. It's like I'm looking at a city. Yeah, it's like Avatar in New York form. And now, viewer questions. Aaron writes, Matt, a major Hollywood studio asks you to direct a music biopic. The budget is $100 million. A commensurate salary for you and your pick of any A-list actors you want. Here's the catch. The biopic has to be about Eddie Money. <laughs> would you do it? Of course I would do it. Who would not do it? I get to make a, a picture where I make Eddie Money look like a, the doofus that he is. And I get a hundred million dollars? Of course I would do it. Is he a doofus? He starts out as a cop? No. What? He trained to be a cop. He never actually got to be a cop. He dropped out of the academy so he could pursue his music career. Okay. And bellow at us on the radio. He produced his own music? Or arranged his own music? He... Did he? I don't know. I think so, yeah. I don't care. Ma, I just want to be a star. Oh, but your family comes from a long line of the Irish policemen. <laughs> so, who would you cast as Eddie Money? If we were younger, Colin Farrell. That's what I'd say. Vincent D'Onofrio is pretty fat these days, isn't he? 
<laughs> yeah, but he's also like 60. <laughs> he's too old. Okay, I don't know. I don't know who I'd cast. Nick writes, which actor has given the best performance in a movie that was otherwise poorly written and directed? Mickey Rourke is one of the finest actors of my lifetime, and he's also one of the people who's made some of the worst career moves around. But he saw an opportunity for money, and he chose to be in The Expendables, a movie I'm not a fan of for a lot of different reasons. I'm not a fan of the movie because I thought it was boring. Yeah, and no one was expendable. No one died. You'd think it's Expendables. <laughs> Everyone's going to die. Yeah, right, exactly. No one dies in The Expendables. He's given just one scene in it, and he was allowed to write his own lines. He tells his heartbreaking story about something that happened in Southeast Asia and a little girl on a bridge. Whoa, okay, this guy's in a completely different movie. I remember that yeah, scene. We watched it down here before we started filming the show. <laughs> it's like, whoa, geez, Mickey Roar, don't don't make us cry during the expendables. I have a comment here from Mike Cronus. Now, in the fact you've mentioned multiple times about the transformation of Sandy at the end of Greece. Sandy makes a decision to just become a greaser instead of a nice dainty young lady so that she can be with Danny. Mike counters. In Greece, Sandy meets Danny halfway. The song, One That I Want, demands he change as well, or else. Hmm. Discuss. Well, I... <laughs> <laughs> you better shape up, because I need a man. Mm-hmm. We don't actually see him do it. We don't have to. They fly away into the sky. Exactly. Then, don't well, they? just like in any movie that ends with a wedding, say, you don't know <laughs> if there's not going to be a divorce in two years. She slept with the tool, the tool boy. Not even the pool boy. The tool boy. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I got your tool right here, and it was over. <laughs> beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Christmas cynicism. We get it. Yeah, it's... it's... Move along. Well, the only survival training I need is my old smoke pole and a big fat box of buckshot that I keep out in that truck. Smoke pole? Is this a slang term for a gun? Why have I never heard this? <laughs> smoke pole? <laughs> this music box, courtesy of The Basement in Cabin in the Woods. What's everybody else doing? Cranky, bored. Cranky and bored. The two dwarves that didn't live. <laughs> there used to be nine. Well, there was that mine collapse. Poor guys. Do you think your Hummer could get through this mess? I could point her due east, hit the gas, and she'd be storming the beaches at Normandy by sunrise. It's a time-traveling Humvee. <laughs> <laughs> My palsy always gets worse when Krampus is near. Come on, guys, I'm gonna teach you how to make peppermint schnapps. Don't you rat me out. Aunt Dorothy, you've just committed a criminal act. <laughs> Mama? Aunt Dorothy gave us liquor. It's not what you do. It's what you believe. It's what's in your heart. Stents. Don't get caught on that hook. It's really going to kill your schnapps, Buzz. Max, get the fire extinguisher! Oh! Max, get up off your dead ass and do something. Howie is down in the kitchen. For a gingerbread man to be in a gingerbread house, that must be a horrific thing. <laughs> that would be really traumatizing. Oft times in the P.O. box, there are records that people send me. I have a very big record collection and I'm an enthusiastic record listener. Uh, it's been a little hectic and I haven't had a chance to listen to a lot of records today, but I listened to one. And in fact, you listened to it with me because we were at a party together. It is Oingo Boingo. I believe it's called Boingo. Horrible album cover. It's like the high school drama club and the AV club got together for a photo. <laughs> yeah. This guy. It's in a beret. This and guy. The, these glasses on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was tough to focus on it because it was kind of background music at the party, but I think we got the gist of it. But initially, it seemed very extreme. Check it out. We have a horn section. Check it out. We have synthesizers going on. But eventually, it just all kind of merged into one, mm -hmm. and it didn't seem as daunting of a task. Oingo Boingo has their, their hits. Uh, Dead Man's Party is a great song. Mm -hmm. Weird Science, we all know. Neither of those are on this album. Now, when I was listening to this, I couldn't help but think. Anyone who is not of my generation, I don't see how anyone could like this. I like it because it reminds me of my teenage years. It reminds me of how I felt when I listened to music like this for the first time. I just can't imagine anyone who's 20 putting this on and saying, oh, yeah, yeah. Anyone young listening to it and is like, how do I even adapt this into this world? It's like, well, 
he could barely adapt himself into the 80s. He's adapted himself out of the band and into soundtracks. As you know, there's still one more hard ticket report to go, but... God, I've been dragging my feet watching that thing. I just hated the last movie so much. I'm going to do it, but the last hard ticket report will be coming out after the new year. However, I will have watched it before, so commitment fulfilled. Yes, our first episode of Unboxing will be the first episode. Our last episode of Unboxing for this season will come out after January 1st. You have to find a movie that has guns, girls, and G-strings. Yeah. That's great. You have to find that movie. That has to be your award for going through all of that. Oh, Jackie Brown. Jackie Brown, there's G-strings. Oh, yes, because those videos that Sam Jackson shows him, they have girls in, in bikinis shooting guns. Christmas movies, Matt. Yeah, what about them? We have to do one out of every, what, 22 episodes has to be a Christmas movie. Doesn't have to be. We have some, like, cooking magazine, like Bon Appetit or something that comes to the house. One out of 12 issues has to be Christmas related. Yeah. That's just gotta suck to be that editor. How much more can I do with peppermint? Sure. One episode of every season of every TV show has to be Christmas themed. They think there's a war on Christmas. Some people think this. Yeah, well, a lot of people believe a lot of crazy things. I know that you have a personal goal every year of watching 150 movies in the year. Now, we're in the home stretch. Where are you at? I'm not going to make it, Matt. I'm at 130 movies. Ooh. Yeah, so 20 movies in a month is tough, but I'm working on it. I'm gonna, I'm still going to try, man. Well, after the movie that we watched today, I'm at 147. Ooh, you're almost so, there. I got one more of these turds to watch. I'm going to watch Star Wars, and then so one more. Well, we don't have any boxes today, but we do have some envelopes to open up. We've got two more, so let's do it. This is from Nick in Tucson, Arizona, and back of it says mixtape. All right. Well, it looks like this is, in fact, a mix CD. It says, welcome to the basement side A. Hmm. Mixtape. This might actually be a tape. There's a bit of La Quinta Inn and Suites stationary there <laughs> he says hey i know you guys are music fans as well as film experts so here's a tape of some stuff i think you may enjoy this is nick and his band the isolators i don't know if the music is from the isolators but i'm gonna find out oh this is cool he's got stills from young frankenstein from megaforce from scarface on the back here this is what we used to do folks when we were teens we would make tapes like the Tapes. Yeah, tapes, and then you'd make cover art. Make cover art. Welcome yeah. to Tucson. I got a, uh, I got a track list here. Oh, man. Mix Corraldo. <laughs> I want my mixtape. It took at least 90 minutes to make a mixtape. It was a 90-minute long tape. You, like, I would work on like the syncing of things, figuring out you know what song works best after another. Tape over one song to put another one on because it didn't sure, work just perfectly. Sure. It was an all-afternoon yeah. project. Yeah, figuring out how long do I have left on this side. Sure. And what song fits in that space. And is it a side closer? I can't tell you how many mixtape sides I ended with R.E.M.'s underneath the bunker because I knew it was only a one-minute song. <laughs> side A is called The Valley of the Dollars. Side B is Beyond the Valley of the Dollars. That's Home just... taping is killing music, damn millennials. <laughs> What's in that package, and who's it from? Parker in Delavan, Wisconsin. I just drove through Delavan the other day, or very close to it. These are uh, postcards in a letter. Sarasota Sands. The large ones are a little frightening when they're just coming at you. And then we have this one from St. Armand Circle in Sarasota, Florida. There you go. Sarasota Opera House. We got some green here. Thank you. Happy holidays, Matt and Craig. It has been a wonderful year of enjoying Welcome to the Basement. Can't believe it's been nearly six years of watching and talking about movies. Six years. Yeah. Where has my life gone? You had a baby. <laughs> Our country hasn't been incinerated. Yeah. It's, it's going okay. I, I've gotten married, blah, blah. Okay. <laughs> Last year, I surprised my dad with a birthday shout out and he loved it. Wonders if we have favorite family vacation memories. It was a time in the Rocky Mountain National Park. We were going on the Cub Lake Trail, me and my three siblings. I would have been around eight or nine. We were ahead of our parents, and we thought we would hide on them, waiting for them to pass, and then we would come up behind them, and we never caught up. 
they made it all the way around the lake, and then we just lost the trail. <laughs> it was very exciting. Our family used to go to this uh, resort when I was a kid. We'd take yearly vacations until the middle of the Reagan years when everything kind of went to hell. But this I tax would... cut will work. <laughs> <laughs> we went and caught those frogs. We put the frogs in a bucket and we gave them all names. And it was a lot of fun. And then when vacation was over, we set the frogs free. Leave only footprints and frogs. Disoriented frogs. <laughs> <laughs> what a good time we had on unboxing. And uh, we hope you had a good time too. And now...